Hi everybody. Welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, neurologist from Rajmandri, Andhra Pradesh, India. I am also the medical author of the book Focus Neurology. My email is 3klpm at gmail.com. Today we are going to talk about a very very fascinating topic. The differences between the progressive bulbar palsy and the pseudo bulbar palsy, cranial nerves part 73, multiple cranial nerve palsies part 1. So, bulbar palsy versus pseudo bulbar palsy, cranial nerves part 73, multiple cranial nerve palsies part 1. Progressive bulbar palsy and pseudo bulbar palsy. There are two principal types of bulbar palsy. One is the progressive bulbar palsy, second is the pseudo bulbar palsy. In both, the outstanding symptoms are dysphagia, dysarthria, and both run a chronic course. Progressive bulbar palsy is basically a lower motor neuron type involvement of the lower cranial muscles, whereas supranuclear or pseudo bulbar palsy is. The lower cranial nerves are involved, but it is not because of the lower cranial nerve involvement per se, but it is because of the bilateral corticobulbar tract involvement. That is the basic difference between the progressive bulbar palsy and pseudo bulbar palsy. So, progressive bulbar palsy is a form of motor neuron disease involving bulbar innervated muscles, causing weakness and atrophy of the muscles supplied by the lower cranial nerves, often accompanied by fasciculations. Progressive bulbar palsy is aggressive and relentless with death usually caused by aspiration pneumonia. Whereas pseudo bulbar palsy is caused by bilateral supranuclear lesions which involve the corticobulbar pathways to the bulbar nucleus. So both the corticobulbar pathways are affected and therefore the lower cranial nerves get indirectly affected. So, the most common causes of pseudo bulbar palsy is multiple cerebral infarctions. There is a less tendency to choke than in true bulbar palsy because the gag reflexes are intact and even may be hyperactive. So, both look alike bulbar palsy and pseudo bulbar palsy because both will present with manifestations of dysphagia and dysarthria and both run a chronic relentless progressive course. So, how to differentiate progressive bulbar palsy and pseudo bulbar palsy? So, the differences between the progressive bulbar palsy and pseudo bulbar palsy. The lesion. In progressive bulbar palsy, the lesion it is bulbar nuclear involvement. Whereas in pseudo bulbar palsy, lesions it is bilateral corticobulbar tracts to the bulbar nuclei. So, bilateral corticobulbar tracts to the bulbar nuclei is the lesion in the pseudo bulbar palsy. The tongue tone is flaccid in bulbar palsy whereas it is spastic in pseudo bulbar palsy. Tongue fasciculations are present in bulbar palsy and it may be absent in the pseudo bulbar palsy. There is a tongue atrophy in bulbar palsy whereas pseudo bulbar palsy it is absent. Very very important gag reflex is absent in bulbar palsy because it is lower motor neuron per se. Whereas gag reflex is hyperactive in pseudo bulbar palsy because it is a UMN lesion. Gag reflex is absent in bulbar palsy whereas gag reflex is hyperactive in pseudo bulbar palsy because it is a UMN lesion and therefore aspiration pneumonia is more common in bulbar palsy than in the pseudo bulbar palsy. Again the jaw jerk is normal in bulbar palsy whereas in pseudo bulbar palsy because the UMN lesion the jaw jerk is hyperactive. The frontal release signs are absent in, in bulbar palsy whereas the frontal release signs are present in pseudo bulbar palsy. The pseudo bulbar effect is absent in bulbar palsy whereas it is present in pseudo bulbar palsy. The common conditions causing bulbar palsy are amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, Faciolondi disease, Kennedy's disease. Whereas in pseudo bulbar palsy, it is human type, the common conditions are multiple cerebral infarctions, multiple sclerosis, and encephalitis. 
So these are all the important concepts of the differences between the bulbar palsy and pseudo bulbar palsy. We have to be very careful because both conditions present in a similar way. Both can cause dysphagia and dysarthria and therefore we need to know the differences between the progressive bulbar palsy and pseudo bulbar palsy. I hope you have enjoyed listening to these to these wonderful concepts. The other important concepts of neurology, I have put it in a question and answer format in the book Focused Neurology written by me, Dr. S. Srinivas. This book is available online from all leading booksellers including Amazon. So if you are interested, this book could be purchased online. I hope you have enjoyed these concepts of the differences between the bulbar palsy and pseudo bulbar palsy. If you have enjoyed it, please like and share the link, but please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Dr. Sinwas Medical Concepts and my BPH Dr. Sinwas Concepts. Thank you. Bye.